In the previous class, we have discussed about the derivation of Bragg's law. And we have seen that the Bragg's law gives you the equation or expression 2D sin theta equal to n lambda. And this is based on the X-ray diffraction. Okay. So when X-ray falls on the planes, crystal planes, they get reflected. Here in the expression 2D equal to sin theta, 2D sin theta equal to n lambda, D is the interplanar spacing, theta is called as glancing angle, n is the order of diffraction, and lambda is the wavelength of X-ray incident on the crystal. And this is very useful expression to find the interplanar spacing, that is the distance between one crystal plane to the conjugative crystal plane. Okay, that is the use of Bragg's law. Next, we'll move towards the spacing between three-dimensional lattice planes of cubic crystals. Okay, so what is the spacing between lattice planes? That is nothing but interplanar distance only. In case of cubic crystals, what is the expression for that spacing between three-dimensional lattice planes? So let us take the coordinate system with O as a origin and OX, OY, OZ as a three mutually perpendicular axis. Now already you know that the crystal planes are represented by means of Miller indices. Let us take the reference plane which is passing through the origin O and let us consider the set of parallel planes. They are defined by Miller indices because we know that the crystal planes are defined by means of Miller indices. Basically, Miller indices represent the set of parallel crystal planes. And let us take one such a set of parallel planes, which are represented by the Miller indices HKL. Okay. Then, uh, this is the diagram where O is the origin, OX, OY, and OZ are three mutually perpendicular coordinate axes. And this is the considered plane. This is the crystal plane, which is having the Miller indices HKL. Okay. Then let us draw OP, which is perpendicular to this plane. And this plane intersects the axis at ABC. It intersects the Z axis at A, intersects Y axis at B, and it intersects the X axis at the point C. Okay. So in the next plane, let us consider one plane passing through O, another parallel plane which is passing through ABC, then respective intercepts are observed to be OA, which is equal to A by H, OB, which is equal to B by K, and OC equal to C by L. Here, ABC are the crystallographic axis. Otherwise, they are lattice constants. HKL are Miller indices because we know that the Miller indices are reciprocals of the intercepts. And here intercepts are OA, OB, and OC. The re reciprocal of intercepts gives you HKL values. That is Miller indices. That's why these intercepts must be the integral multiple of reciprocals of Miller indices. That is A by H, B by K, and C by L where A, B, C are called as, or constants, or they are called as lattice constants. That is, they are representing the distance between the atoms in X, Y, and Z direction, respectively. Let us draw a perpendicular OP, which is normal to this plane, from drawn from the origin O. Now, the reference plane, corresponding to this reference plane, the distance OP, which is equal to D, which is called as interplanar spacing, because we have imagined a plane passing through O perpendicular, that is parallel to this ABC plane, because we have started with a plane which is passing through O, which is having the Miller indices HKL. And here, ABC represents a parallel plane to the plane passing through O. Okay, another plane is there, I have not written here. And here, the distance between these two planes is exactly equal to OP. 
and we represent it as d that is called as interplanar spacing okay so op which is equal to d which is called as interplanar spacing and we have to obtain the expression for this interplanar spacing d so let us uh, find out the relation between this op with the angles made by this crystal crystallography axis and here we observe the normal makes an angle alpha makes angles alpha beta gamma with the crystal axis what are crystal axis ox oy and oz are the crystal axis and here the angle pox is represented by alpha poy is represented by beta and poz is represented as gamma okay here alpha beta gamma are the angles made by the crystallographic axis with the perpendicular op okay here pox makes an angle alpha poy is equal to beta and angle poz equal to gamma okay so x axis makes alpha angle y axis makes an angle beta and z axis makes an angle gamma with respect to the perpendicular op now from trigonometry uh, the perpendicular drawn with respect to the plane then we can define the cos of angle cosine of that alpha that is cos of alpha which is equal to op by oa okay basically cos of an angle is defined as ratio of adjacent by hypotenuse okay here adjacent is op and oa is the hypotenuse okay which is representing the hypotenuse that is uh, the opposite side with respect to the right angle because we know that op is perpendicular to this plane abc therefore this must be having the angle 90 degree with respect to this uh, line ap ap is perpendicular to op that's why this is the hypotenuse okay and here op is equal to d interplanar spacing and oa which is representing the intercept and we have defined that intercept as a by h where h is the miller indice then cos beta is similarly represented as op by ob which is equal to d by b by k and cos gamma it must be gamma cos gamma is equal to op by oc which is equal to d by c by l because the intercept ob is equal to b by k intercept oc is equal to c by l okay and these are the cosine of angles alpha beta gamma and according to the analytical geometry the properties of direction cosines and these cos of these angles are called as direction of cosines and according to the mathematics we know that for a given plane the cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma should be equal to 1 and these are called as direction cosine property or property of direction cosines now substitute for cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma you will get a d divided by a by h the whole square plus a d divided by b by k the whole square plus d by c by l the whole square equal to 1 okay so just i have substituted for cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma that is obtained using the general trigonometry here i can take this d square outside d can be taken outside and this 1 by a by h can be written as h by a so it will become h square by a square plus k square by b square plus l square by c square into d square equal to 1 so for cube definitely uh, a equal to b equal to c before that i will get the expression for d square therefore the interplanar spacing square d square is equal to 1 divided by h square by a square plus k square by b square plus l square by c square so this is the general expression for the interplanar spacing 
if you take the square root on both side you will get the expression for d so d square you will get here and here interplanar spacing between the crystal planes defined by miller indices hkl is represented as dhkl because d depends on the values of hkl so therefore dhkl the other is the interplanar spacing represented by the miller indices hkl is equal to 1 divided by square root of h square by a square plus k square by b square plus l square by c square this is the general formula for the interplanar spacing in terms of the miller indices okay so for cubic crystals what happens a equal to b equal to c the three sides of the unit cell are equal therefore we can substitute for a equal to b equal to c so if you substitute here put b equal to a and c equal to a you can write the interplanar spacing dhkl is equal to a divided by square root of h square plus k square plus l square and you can recall the calculations done in the x ray diffraction experiment done in the b laboratory okay so here the interplanar spacing can be represented as a divided by square root of h square plus k square plus l square and this is true for cubic crystals and this expression is true for the uh, all seven crystal systems and here for cubic crystal a equal to b equal to c therefore you can substitute b equal to a and c equal to a you will get square root of a square as a common so that square root of a square will be equal to a that's why that's why you will get the expression for interplanar spacing equal to a divided by h square plus k square square root of h square plus k square plus l square so this is the very useful equation for solving the problems so this is the expression for interplanar spacing between the lattice planes so let us find out what uh, uh, how we can calculate the interplanar spacing let us take one or two examples so interplanar spacing between 100 planes in a cubic crystals can be calculated using the above equation so here 100 they represent miller indices okay here h equal to 1 k equal to 0 and l equal to 0 so what is the interplanar spacing for 100 planes that is d100 equal to a divided by square root of 1 that is definitely equal to a so d is exactly equal to the lattice constant a let us find out what is the interplanar spacing between 110 planes okay if you substitute you will get d110 is equal to a divided by square root of 2 just you substitute, substitute for h equal to 1 k equal to 1 and l equal to 0 you will get a divided by root 2 for 100 set of planes so what is the interplanar spacing between 111 planes so substitute hkl values in the appropriate equation you will get d111 plane equal to a divided by square root of 3 so if you take the ratio of these interplanar spacings of particular miller indices of planes definitely the separation between successive 100 110 1, and 111 1 planes are a comma a divided by root 2 and a divided by root 3 respectively therefore the ratio of their separations is d100 is to d110 is to d111 they are having the ratio a is to a by root 2 is to a by root 3 or you can write the common you can take out this common factor as a you will get the ratio equal to 1 is to 1 by root 2 is to 1 by root 3 so they are the ratios of this interplanar spacing for these particular planes